Hi, I'm Carol. My opponent's claim was that changing the format of the SAT would have a positive effect on the admission process. And our secondary claims were that the format of the SATs work against, against particular groups. The current format of the SATs don't assess what students learn in high school. And the current format of the SATs fail to consider the quality of the student. But the thing is, um, my opponent used old information because the SAT <coughs> format was changed last year to help the students and the admission process. And so my secondary claims are going to be that the 2016, or the 2006, in 2016 was the first major changes it had since 2005. It's going to be why the test is changing, how the test is changing, how students, and, and then how can students prepare. So first, the College Board President David Coleman said that the SATs change what's tested, how it's scored, and how students can prepare, like I said. The new SAT will include three sex three sections, evidence-based reading and writing, math, and an optional essay. Each of these designed to stop students from just filling a bubble on the test sheet. And then David Coleman also said, we're not interested in students just picking an answer, but they're also justifying their answer. Test, the test will also shift its current score scale of 2400 back to 1600 with a separate score for the essay. And then test takers will no longer be penalized for incorrect answers. And then College Board partnered with Khan Academy to provide free test preparation skills or, and like materials. And that started in 2015 to get the test takers for 2016 ready. And then income eligible students will also receive fee waivers to apply to four colleges to, for free for an incentive for them to take the SATs and go to college. And the test is changing so that it can create more opportunities for students rather than obstructing them with test questions that feel detached from their educations and the preparation that colleges need. And then while the majority of colleges require SAT scores, um, hundreds of schools have allowed students to decide whether or not to submit, whether or not to submit scores. And then according to the National Association for College Admission Counseling, students' grades and the academic rigor of their courses weighs more than SAT scores, class ranks, and professed interest in a particular school and admission decisions. And um, they wanted to change the test so that it was like an incentive for schools to start making the SAT more relevant and more needed. So if it was like a private school, school where you can just submit an essay and do that, then that helps with that. So it's like, take this test and it'll help you get into the school you want as well as, well as with your grades. And then the test is changing by, okay. So the reading and writing sections include questions that require students to cite evidence from the readings for their answer choices. And it also includes reading passages from a broader range of subjects, including science, history, social studies, and literature, giving it more accessibility for students who like those subjects more. And it no longer asks to complete sentences with obscure words memorized from flashcards like those SAT scores we all hated. <laughs> it's more words that we um, would likely use again, like synthesize, like these more college-related words. The math section no longer allows calculators to be used on every section. It focuses on data analysis and real-world problems, algebra, and some advanced con concepts that most prepare students for college and their careers. And then the essay, like I said, is optional because the people grading the essays were more focused on what they wrote, not whether the statements were true or the arguments were reasonable. And then the how the students can prepare, they have free online resources. And then um, David Coleman said that if there are no more secrets on the test, it's very hard to take these classes that are gonna help you like SAT prep courses, that's going to um, make it easier for you to take these tests. So Coleman ended with saying that he hopes that this is a breath of sigh or sigh of relief that this exam will be more focused, useful, open, clear, and aligned with the work that you do throughout high school. Thank you.
All right, well, you summarize the advocate's argument pretty clearly, and you basically present your own giant counterclaim without responding particularly to the secondary issues that the advocate presented. And your argument is premised on the notion that there have been changes in the way the test works, and those changes address all of the issues that the advocate is talking about. Um, I didn't hear any evidence that was specific to some of the groups that the advocate had mentioned, so uh, it seems like that's a presupposition that these changes are going to have this long-term benefit. I think that that is something that would need to be demonstrated a little bit more. But the notion that the test has changed and that the nature of the questions is different does seem to suggest that there is probably some outdated information in the advocate's argument, and I think that that's a, a good way to respond to that point. Um, like I said, I just think that you need to have some stuff that's a, a little bit more particular to some of the particulars that they talked about. Uh, the one place that it seems like you are talking about that concerns what the high school content was and what's going to be covered there. You had some information from the president of the college board that suggested that that was kind of the goal of the new test is to make sure that uh, we're getting the things that students are going to recognize that's uh, based on the kinds of experiences that they've had in school. Um, it might be a little bit early to expect there to be much data since these changes just occurred last year, but if there was any data, that would probably help your argument a bit. Uh, like I said, it, it appeared to be a series of counterclaims without much analysis of the advocates' evidence and reasoning, um, and simply premised on the notion that a different test means that everything has, in fact, changed. I'm not sure that everything has changed, I'd, although I do think that, obviously, the scoring systems change if you're going from back to... from. 2400 back down to 1600 that's going to be a different issue although the essay component now sounds like it's going to be scored a little bit more subjectively and the I guess your idea here is that that's advantageous in some way but I think um, you're going to have to explain how that addresses some of those issues that the advocate was talking about originally um, you know, and, and there was a long period of time when in the argument where you, there were lots of claims without any sources being presented. I did get, like I said, two or three sources early on. Then there's a long block of uh, assertions. And then right at the end, there's a, a claim that says that uh, that talks about uh, prep classes, which is kind of interesting because if they're offering free test preparation, but you're saying at the bottom, test preparation isn't going to be useful or important anymore. That seems like uh, the change that you've talked about earlier doesn't seem like it's going to be that important either. So that's a little bit contradictory. All right. Thank you.